This is Ben Spencer, medical correspondent for the Daily Mail, and I'll be answering your questions on coronavirus. Alex writes, my wife and I are 71 and 70. She takes immune suppressants to lessen the pain caused by rheumatoid arthritis. Apart from that, we are both fairly fit for our age. We have been self-isolating for two weeks now. How safe is it for me to go shopping for things like ready meals, fruit and veg, razor blades, etc.? Yes, people who take immune suppressants are more at risk from coronavirus. That's because the treatment that is taken to suppress that immune reaction that causes the joint pain will also suppress your body's natural reaction to coronavirus. So it's right that you do take these measures to protect your wife. However, even people who are in the shielding group, those who are most at risk from coronavirus, it's only that person, the patient themselves, who has to stay in. It's perfectly fine for other people in the house to go out for shopping and things like that. Just be careful that you don't spend much time near other people and try and spend as little time as possible in the shop. Also try and go to the shops as irregularly as possible if you can get it down to once a week if you can get it down to once every two weeks all the better if there's someone else who can bring your shopping to you and do you a favor like that that would be even better but yeah it's fine for you to go to the shops just be careful while you do it terry writes my friend lives on her own as i do we are both in our 70s but in good health we're not seeing anyone else including family the supermarkets are struggling to meet home delivery slots, so is it still okay for me to continue to take her to Sainsbury's during the allocated slot for the elderly so we can both do our weekly food shop? She doesn't drive and is very reluctant to endanger herself by getting on a bus, and the bus timetable would make it difficult for her to get to Sainsbury's for the 8am slot. This is very difficult. The government has said that everyone should stay in their own home and go out only for certain reasons. Now, one of those reasons is shopping. However, the government has also said that people shouldn't see people from other households. That's to try and stop the virus spreading household to household. So strictly speaking, you shouldn't be seeing your friend and even to help her to go to Sainsbury's. However, these are difficult times and we all must take these rules and interpret them to the best of our ability. If that's the only way your friend can get her shopping, maybe you think to yourself, yes, I could take her and it's better than her getting on the bus, which is certainly at higher risk. However, is there anything else you could do? Could you perhaps take her shopping list and help her by doing the shopping for her? Is there a local shop near you that could do deliveries? Certainly in some areas of London and other cities, the corner shops, which have been very well stocked during this time, have started doing deliveries. If you look on uh, mobile phone apps like Uber Eats or like Just Eat, then they are, a lot of um, local shops are getting on that and using those services to deliver to people. So yes, it's probably okay for you to help your neighbor to go to the shops, but before you take that risk, have a real think about if there's other ways you could help her. Jack writes, do daily newspapers carry coronavirus? Now this is something we've been asked about a lot, and no, there's a very, very low risk that newspapers will carry the coronavirus. And the World Health Organization has said that themselves. The reason for this is newspapers are produced in a sterile situation. So the only way the virus is going to be transmitted is if someone actually coughs on it during delivery to your home. Now, so that is a risk, but it's a very, very small risk. The coronavirus can travel on surfaces and it can live on those surfaces for quite a while. So studies published in the last few weeks have showed the virus can survive on stainless steel and plastic for up to 72 hours, on cardboard for 24 hours. So that would probably be the same as a newspaper. 
but you've got to think about the actual chance of that happening and all the risks are really about high volume touching areas so for example a stair rail on a bus or a lift button in a busy building a um, an atm machine is likely to be lots of risk it's the things that lots and lots of people are touching or surfaces that people are touching in high risk areas so if you were working on a coronavirus ward then the plastic and stainless steel areas in that ward are likely to be very high risk which is why personal protective equipment is so important for doctors however for surfaces that very few people are going to touch or cough over, the risk is much lower. And newspapers are one of those. So the chance of your daily newspaper carrying coronavirus is very, very small indeed. Paula writes, My daughter was diagnosed with a large squamous cell on her tongue. She went to partial glossectomy in October and removal of 42 lymph nodes. She recovered well and there was no spread of the nodes. She did not need any further treatment and has been well since and attends monthly checks. I feel that she is in the at-risk group because her immune system is still compromised and she should self-isolate for the next 12 weeks. There is still confusion from her employers and I would like clarification on this matter. Well, the government has said there are 1.5 million people around the country who are very at risk from coronavirus. And those are people whose immune systems are suppressed. And if your daughter was in that group, she should have had a letter or a text message from her doctor. Now the fact she hasn't suggests she's probably not in that at risk group. However, that might be because the letter's gone missing. It might be because she's been missed out on the database. And this has been a huge operation. The NHS has tried to contact one and a half million people very quickly. Some people will have been missed out and some people will have got the letter when they didn't actually need it. So there's been quite a lot of confusion, which is understandable. So the best thing for you to do is for your daughter to contact her GP and ask her advice. However, it's still possible for you to take matters into your own hands. If you feel and your daughter feels that she is at risk, there is no problem with you and your daughter deciding they should self-isolate for the next 12 weeks. And a lot of people have already made that decision to reduce their own risk without being told to. Now, if your daughter's in full-time work, she needs to talk to her employer as how to do that. In fact, even if she's not in the shielding group, she should still talk to her employer because they may well decide that she's vulnerable and help her. And they, the government has said everyone in any case should be working from home if they're able to. So that might be an option for her. So the best thing for you to do is for your talk, daughter to talk to her GP, your daughter to talk to her employer. And after that, you both need to sit and weigh up the risks, weigh up the benefits of any action, and then go from there.